By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we bring you more magic from the Often Troll Cup. We have reached the semi-finals between Robert and Wouter. And the interesting thing here is that both players are playing with Often Trolls in their deck. I mean, you didn't have to, you know, you were allowed to, you could play, but you didn't have to play with Often Trolls. So I'm quite surprised to see two decks having this creature in their first 60, 60 uh, reaching the semi-finals. It's just one step away from that final in the Often Troll Cup. So the decks that we're going to look at is an Atog brew by Ro uh, Robert against an Underworld Dreams brew by Wouter. Now, before we go to the deck deck, I would just like to point out that you can also skip this section and go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on that timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. I know that some people enjoy first going to the games and then going back to the deck deck section or just skipping the deck deck section altogether. So feel free to do that. Just check the description below for the timestamps. And as for here, we are going to continue with the deck deck and we are actually going to start. Let me check. We are going to start with the deck of Robert, the Atok Brew. And here we see the deck of Robert. So this is his Atok Brew. And the first thing I notice is that there is no power in this deck so a nice underpowered deck reaching the semi-finals and we've seen it before but now we're seeing it again so also without power it is actually possible does that mean that you play budget well not really i mean look at some of the beautiful cards in this deck mishra's workshop that's the one that catches my eye and also of course that full play set of tris kellyan's there and i guess when you talk about atok you know it's going to be an artifact heavy deck right so that's exactly what we're seeing here we see the four mana volts and in a way those mana volts they kind of function as the power as the moxon you know mana is an extremely strong card you know one to put on the battlefield tap for and you gain three mana so you net two mana and a plus and there's a reason that mana is actually restricted or banned in a lot of formats but not in old school magic which i really like so one of the things you can do here of course with the vault is use your mana volts to get your suchis out your trikes out early then sack the vault to the atok to deal some extra damage and you see that more with uh budget decks budget decks have to be super efficient usually they're like aggro and more weenie style decks but also like this deck this atok brew they can be just super efficient so everything in this deck is going to hurt the opponent right one of the things that i like here is the little synergy combo that reminds me of back in the day when i started playing magic and that's black vice and anchor of mishra like you had a lot of combinations also wheel of Fort fortune and black vice black vice was quite a popular card actually uh, back in 94 and uh, the nice thing is here you can play your vice and your vice hurts you, right? For or hurts your opponent, I should say, for having more cards than four in his or her hand. So what you want to do with vice as your opponent, you just want to play at your hand so that you don't get any damage from the vice anymore. But here's the problem: there, with an anchor of mission on the table, you don't really want to play a land because lands are going to hurt you. But you need to play lands to play out spells. You know what I mean? So you're kind of cut in this catch twenty two where you get damage either way. And when you're playing against red, which is four lightning bolts, four chains, in this deck two disintegrates, a fork even, there's just so much direct damage. Remember the four strikes, or uh, trikes, triskelions, or basically expensive lightning bolts themselves as well. You can cast them for six and they can instantly deal three damage, which you think, why would you do that? Why would you spend six mana to deal three damage well you would do that if your opponent is almost dead and trust me with a deck like this it can go really quickly we can see like people dying in three or four turns with this deck so i think it's super explosive uh explosive i'm not surprised to to actually see this here in the semifinals or i should say i'm not surprised to see an atok deck in the semifinals uh it is surprising to see some of the choices made and it's quite inspiring and i think um the coolest choice of them all and i'm not sure uh robert how this card did for you in the tournament maybe you can let me know in the comments below is raging river now raging river is an enchantment uh it's too red to cast and it's um it's from the core set so it's from alpha it wasn't reprinted after unlimited and it's it's quite an interesting card uh, let me just read it to you um it reads whenever one or more creatures you control attack each defending player divides all creatures without flying they control into a left pile and a right pile then for each attacking creature you control choose left or right 
That that creature can't be blocked this combat except by creatures with flying and creatures in a pile with the chosen label. So it's um it's an incredibly complex card and it's a card that's really based on the idea that a lot of creatures do not have flying. So forcing your opponent to have to divide his creatures when blocking means that you can have uh, you can have your preferred blocks and your your you can take advantage out of the combat situation. Now, as we know, unfortunately, in a lot of the, I guess I could call it modern old school, you don't see a lot of these, you know, funny combat moments with a lot of creatures on the battlefield. You do, you do see it from time to time, and maybe in this tournament a little bit more because of all the often trolls that we're seeing. Um, but it's, it's less combat driven and I guess more spells driven, uh, if that makes sense. So Raging River doesn't see a lot of play, but it is a beautiful card and I actually can't wait to see it in action. So hopefully, uh, Robert, you get to play it in this match. So this is the deck of Robert. Uh, let's go and take a look at the deck of his opponent, Wouter. And here we see the deck of Wouter. So there are four Underworld Dreams in here, but actually the interesting thing is here that the rest of the deck is not really built around the Underworld Dreams in the sense that I don't see Howling Mine, I don't see Winds of Change, there's no Time Twister in here. So um, he is playing with Underworld Dreams and he, he is having some control vibes in his deck, especially the White Splash. They're all control cards, four swords, three disenchants and a balance that is really going to help. Uh, Wouter kind of control the board and keep the board clean so that he can continue dealing damage with the Underworld Dreams. Um, also, there are four Lightning Bolts, just an all-star card. I mean, that can get you out of so many nasty situations. I think Demonic Tutor is also quite good in this deck. If you're in a pickle, you know, you can use your Demonic Tutor to look up your Wheel of Fortune. And with your Underworld Dreams, you can deal tons of damage out of nowhere and get a nice fresh hand. Also, that balance, being able to, to tutor that up. I think Balance is just one of the best cards to get you back from a behind situation. Um, the four Dark Rituals there at the top, beautiful black bordered ones, just like the Bolts, by the way, so it's really nice to see. I think those Dark Rituals in this deck are really good because of the Underworld Dreams, because of the Mind Twist, and because of the Hypnotic Spectre. So there are like three cards that are like really ideal to cast with the help from Dark Rituals. So Dark Ritual could do could do some work here in this deck. So quite interesting. Again, it is powerless, by the way. So really nice to have the semifinal between two powerless decks. And let's see if they're going to, uh, to miss their blue cards. Let's go to the games. Game number one, and we have Robert on the left and Wouter on the right. I believe it's Robert on the play. And let's see if his deck is as explosive as I expect. Can he find, I don't know, Mana Vault, Soul Ring or something for a quick start? There we see Tapping a Mountain and there is a Soul Ring. City in a Bottle, interesting. Now City in a Bottle, when I'm looking at the list of Wouter, it's not really going to hurt him, but there is a but. He is playing with City of Brass, so maybe, you know, if he has City of Brass in hand or draws into one, it's just going to be a useless card. There we see a Badlands from Wouter. Strip Mine on the Badlands. And passing turn here, so not a lot of damage dealt yet by Robert. So I guess that's good news for Wouter, although he has lost the land and he's facing that city in the bottle, which is possibly countering his city of brasses. Finding a second swamp, casting a demonic tutor. Hmm, what is he going to look for? It's really hard to tell without knowing what's in his hand. For example, if he has a dark ritual in hand, he would probably go for a mind twist. If he's low on land, maybe he'll go for a Batlands. If he's got you know, it really depends on what's in his hand. And attacking now for two with the Mistress Factory. Wouter going to drop to 18 here. And passing turn. And playing a Setch Troll. So that is now a 3-3 because of that Badlands. But he doesn't have any land open to regenerate it. So now it's open for a Bolt or a Chain or Disintegrate. Okay, there's a Chain Lightning. So Setch Troll's gone. Attacking in here with the factory, pumping the factory with three. That means Wouter dropping to 15. You really don't want to go below 10 against a direct damage deck. And Robert needs to find like a lightning bolt, for example. He's playing an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. As they say at this tournament. So often troll on the board. But again, he doesn't have any land. So he really needs that extra wreck to regenerate it. It's very vulnerable now. Again... 
to direct damage. Let's see, six, there's a Triskelion. And is he gonna use the trike to kill the often troll? Exactly, that's what he does. I think that's a good decision passing turn here. So Valter is not really able to play out under the pressure put on the board by Robert. And that makes sense because he's simply not drawing enough land. Is he gonna miss another land drop? I hope for the game that he doesn't. Come on, play a land, Wouter, you can do it. Going through his card, so it looks like he has some options. The best option will be to play a land, but he doesn't doesn't have any, or maybe it's that City of Brass that's being, uh, being countered by that City in the Bottle. And there we see another often troll, okay. <laughs> so at least a lot of trolls are being played here by Wouter. Uh, but I don't think it's really gonna gonna save him here. Uh, again, he's not able to regenerate. Of course, he's still on 15. The game's not finished. But if Wouter doesn't start drawing lands very quickly, the game will be finished very quickly as well. So there is a double activation of the Mishra's Factories. It looks like he's just gonna swing in for six here, offering a possible trade to Wouter. So interesting to see here what he's going to do. If he takes six, he's going to nine. Okay, I guess he's, he's deciding pretty quickly. I, I would need some more time to make up my mind. I think I would have maybe... Oh, there we see Disintegrate on the off control. Okay, I think maybe I would have blocked the Trike because it also saves you a damage later of that plus one, plus one counter. Um, I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments below what you would have done. Let's first see if Wouter can find another land or a Dark Ritual or something, you know, to get back into this. What does he need? Uh, Nevenerl's Disc, he's playing with a one-off. I mean, it's unlikely, but if he has one, he first needs more land, though. Okay, we see a ritual. Okay, here, here, here you go. Here's the disc. Now, the problem, of course, with this scenario is he needs a full turn, and I'm not sure if he's going to get one. Robert can swing in for six here, putting Wouter on three, and then he only needs a chain or a bolt to finish the job. Oh, lightning bolt on one of the factories. That is actually quite nice. Gonna drop to five, at least he's not on three, which is quite important. Okay. Oh, gonna go to one and then killed. Yep, killed by that one. <laughs> plus one, plus one counter on the trike. Oh man. Oh, that always happens. Oh, and yeah, trike is a really difficult creature to play against. So um, yeah, this game went really fast and I, I kind of, you know, vowed to you didn't really have a chance. You, did, you didn't draw into any land, so. Let's hope um, you'll do better in game number two. Both these players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here at the Often Troll semi-final. So Robert is one up with his ATOC deck. And Wouter, at least he gets to start here. Let's hope he can find some lands. And of course, both players were able to sideboard. And the thing, the positive thing here is for Wouter that Robert didn't see much of his deck. Like, he doesn't know he's playing with white. He doesn't know he's got, like, the Underworld Dreams. And let's take a look. Robert here starting with a Mana Vault. And that means that next turn, possibly, you could play out a Suchi, for example. Oh, no, Wouter. Come on, play a land. Are you waiting for some? Okay, you're waiting for something else. Okay. I mean, don't be stuck on land now. Thank you. So playing a plateau, so there's some white mana. Disenchant on the vault would be quite nice. Or he could say, I'm just going to wait until he casts something with it and disenchant that. Choosing to disenchant the vault here. Because you might as well say, you know, I'm going to wait until you're going to cast uh, like a sushi and then disenchant that sushi. But better be safe than sorry. Again, a strip mine. Wow. <laughs> Oh, this is so annoying for Wouter, of course, playing with three colors. There's the City of Brass, at least not a city in a bottle on the table here in game number two. So it looks like Wouter is able to put up more of a fight here in game number two. Let's see, looking at his hand, what can he do here? Passing turn, Robert playing Mountain number two, tapping two. Is there an Atok? Yes, there is an Atok. And there's a quick lightning bolt here by Wouter. I think that's a great decision. You want to get rid of that creature ASAP. And that, of course, is a good reason to get rid of um, the Mana Vault earlier in the game so quickly. It is food for the Atok, of course. And there we see a Setch Troll. 
with the help of a dark ritual. Now remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish, so that's why you don't see him taking a damage for that extra black mana there in the pool. And the set draw, of course, being a 3-3 because of that swamp on the board. And let's see what is Robert going to do here. And it looks like it's some lightning bolt. He's regenerating it and a double bolt. Okay, I think if I'm Valter, that's not too bad. I wouldn't really mind. Like he's spending two bolts on one set troll. That's okay. It kind of shows how incredibly annoying the set troll is for Valter, uh, for Robert. And there is a Suchi and a Dizzy Chan. So here you see, as soon as, as Valter has access to his white mana, he has his control element and he can play his disenchants, his swords, and he can kind of control Robert's uh, aggression. And there is another land, a Hammerheim from Legends. Tapping three here, there is a disintegrate. Just a lot of destruction here. Both players are just killing everything in sight. Only lands remain. And there we see a bad lands past turn. And, you know, both players pretty light on cards here. Another Suchi. And is there an answer from Wouter? Already played two Disenchants and a Lightning Bolt. There is a Lightning Bolt actually on Robert. Wow, that's quite interesting. And then a Wheel of Fortune. Now I understand that move. Now I get it. Another option could have been to do three damage on the Suchi and then think maybe I'm going to draw into another bolt. That would have been an option. And I'm just saying this because Robert is on such a high life total. Then again, he already played out a bolt, I think. Yes, yeah, so the chances are pretty slim to draw your third bolt with that wheel. So it's probably a good decision to play it on the life total. There is a night nice sword to Plaus here. So the removing continues. It does mean that Robert goes up, but he also lost three points because of that bolt. So he's now on 21. There's a Mishra's workshop. Now I'm really expecting some action here because he's got a full grip of cards. There is a mana vault. That means two mana floating still. Tapping three more to cast an often troll. Interesting. I really was expecting a Triskelion or a Suchi or something. So it's actually not too bad here for Wouter. Let's see what he can do. Unfortunately, the, the webcam quality is not great, by the way. There is a mind twist. Oh, oh that is brutal. And is there a bolt in hand? No, there is not. It's hard to see the cards because of the poor image quality, but there's not a bolt in hand, unfortunately, for Robert here to cast. Uh, but that's, of course, good news for Wouter here. And, of course, a mind twist after a wheel is, is fantastic for Wouter. Let's see what he can do here. And there's a Demonic Tutor. And things are starting to look bad here for Robert. I mean, he is still on 21. I wonder what he's going to look up. It's kind of difficult because what you basically want to do is maybe you want to draw more cards, but he, he doesn't play with the tome. Depending on the hand, maybe a little book could be useful. And oh, a COP red. Okay, of course, from the sideboard. Of course, that makes absolute sense. Absolute good choice here, Wouter. And I think that COP Red is, isn't going to give you the victory in this second game. You would kind of think so. It's just such a strong card. And there's an Underworld Dreams next to it. This is kind of like, oh, a double Underworld Dreams. This is like a perfect scenario here for Wouter. And that means for every card that Robert is going to draw, he's going to take two damage. That is bad news. Of course, he still has that Mishra's Factory. Attacking with both, having to use his City of Brass. So that means he still gets the damage, at, you know, from the often troll indirectly. And there is a Triskelion.
And actually, this is bad news for 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 Wouter. I kind of thought with that um, two underworld dreams and COP red, he was kind of in the clear. But here you can see the power of artifacts. We see a disenchant. Problem is, even if you, yeah, okay, Nevenerol's disc, but then he's gonna destroy his own dreams and his COP red. It's not ideal, but you have to do what you have to do to stay alive, I guess. I mean, this is difficult for uh, for Wouter. I mean, he's he's dealing damage. He's got the COP red, but just those artifact creatures are going to kill him. Attacking now, uh, able to deal six damage, I believe. That means he's going to drop to four. Or there is a bolt. It's really hard to see though, but a bolt on the factory. So at least that's good news. And that means four damage. So then he goes to six. And remember, trike. You know, those three plus one plus one counters are also three damage. So, I mean, this is really bad news. And, and Robert can also regenerate the often troll. So Robert's untapping now. I mean, this is gonna be really, really, really tight. And of course he's gonna swing in and now Wouter has to activate the disc. He has no choice. He has to do it. Activates the disc. And that means three more damage, going to three measly life. One trike is enough to win this game. Let's see, can he do it? If he wins this game, he also wins the match. Looks like he can't, passing turn here. Also, the COP red, of course, is gone because of that Nevernorl's disc. That means that one bolt is enough. I mean, I, I can't really see Wouter win this one. Tapping, attacking first. Of course, taking damage, no COP red anymore. And there's a trike, that's it. <laughs> oh man. I really I really thought um, when the COP red came on the table, I, I really overestimated that COP red. And I'm sure Wouter did as well, because I was like, okay, you've got COP red, you've got two dreams. You probably can make this work. There is a big chance that you're actually going to win this game, especially prior to that when he played wheel of fortune and mind twist but it just didn't happen it did there was just there's too much gas in robert's tank he just kept he kept playing and, and i think the factories here played a big role as well dealing a lot of damage and it it, it looks like a very tough deck to play against uh, robert congratulations you will move on to the finals of the often troll cup uh, thank you, uh, Robert and Wouter, for sharing your match here on Timmy Talks. And I would also like to thank you for watching another episode of uh, Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like to support the channel, uh, you can do so quite easily. You can leave a like, you can leave a comment, you can turn off your, um, your ad blocker. You can um, put, uh, uh, subscribe, of course, if you're not a subscriber yet. And what you can also do is you can become a patron of the channel and you can do that by going to patreon.com. There's probably a link popping up right now. Click on that link that will take you straight to Timmy Talk's Patreon page and there you can find out how you can support this channel. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's meet the fantastic, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.